Okay, so I am getting ready to bond the bow eye into the stapley. So I'm going to follow the method from the Goujon Brothers book of high strength bonding um, for fittings. Uh, there are a number of reasons for using this method in an instance like this and I thought this would be a good opportunity to explain those. So the bow eye is obviously going to be up in the forward end of the boat and um, it's a fitting that's used under quite a lot of load at times, um, hauling the boat up onto the trailer. Uh, and also if the boats have a toad in a seaway or anything like that, um, you've got the entire weight of the boat potentially on this fitting um, and it can be tugged with quite some force. So it's a fitting that wants to be really well seated. So here I have a cross-sectional example of uh, basically what we're trying to achieve and the method that the Goujon brothers talk about in their book. So it's a, uh, the principle of bonding the threads for your fitting into thickened epoxy and using this stepped hole method. So you have a slightly larger hole towards the outside of the fastener um, and then a, a correctly sized hole towards the end. So this is what helps you position your fixing. There are a couple of reasons for doing that with epoxy. Um, first of all is to prevent water ingress. Fittings like this are, are quite a common source for water ingress into the wood, which can then result in rot. So um, setting the threads in epoxy is a good way to prevent that. Using this method, you also dramatically increase the loading capability of the fitting. If you imagine uh, this fitting in its position under load, what's gonna happen is it's gonna pull in this direction. And although you've got two threads there, you've actually really got the entire load on one thread. Even if you have a large washer or plate underneath this lower thread, you can still compress the wood under load. And once that happens, the bottom thread then becomes loose and you'll see the fitting continue to move like this and it'll eventually work completely loose and um, allow water ingress. By bonding the threads with epoxy, you actually have a holding power that is the full length of the thread and the surface where the washer or plate is sat as well. So you have a lot greater hold within the wood and a um, much lower chance of this movement resulting. So up under the bow then, and you can see that I've roughly shaped the hull before paint um, so as to take this fitting. What's going to happen is we're actually going to bond a seat of epoxy underneath the fitting so that it's completely mounted um, and it's not sat on any hard spot on the hull. It's effectively got a cast base um, so it's going to sit there really nicely and uh, spread the load of the fitting out into the hull. So the first thing to do is going to be to mark the holes. So the first thing is to drill the oversized hole then. Uh, it tends to be cleaner if you drill the larger hole first and then the smaller guidance hole through the centre of it afterwards. You can do it the other way around but it's sometimes a little bit difficult to centre a larger drill within a smaller hole. Uh, depends on what sizes you're going with really. Your larger hole should be roughly a quarter inch bigger than your smaller hole. So I've got an 8mm bit here for the M8 thread which is going to give me my guidance hole and I've got a 14mm bit which is going to be my larger clearance hole. So I'm going to go in a short way with that first. Um, because I'm not 100% sure on the thickness of the stem that I've got here, I'm just going to go in a short way. Then I'll drill my smaller hole through the middle and I'll measure the thickness of the stem. And then because I've got a guidance pocket, I may go a little bit deeper with the 14mm hole um, after that, depending on uh, what thickness we've got there. So first up then, we'll get the 14mm hole put through a short way. Okay, so you can see we've got a guidance hole that positions our thread correctly and then a larger hole which is going to carry the epoxy that's going to bond all of that thread surface into the wood. 
Okay, so now I've got some correctly sized threads in the fitting, I know how deep my holes are. Now I'm just going to drill the larger hole a little bit deeper and use the hole I did before as a guidance. You want to be about two thirds to three quarters of the depth of the hole, um, oversized. And that's going to be what carries the epoxy. So I'm going to mark the back side of these. And I'm just going to roughly gauge with the drill bit what sort of depth I need to go to. So I'm going to go to around about here, the end of the uh, taper on the flat bit, and mark that. Okay, so that's everything dry fitted, and uh, now I'm just going to mask up the area and we'll be ready to apply the epoxy and put it on permanently. So the next job to do is going to be to wet out all the exposed wood edges with um, pure epoxy, unthickened. Um, the easiest way to do that is normally with a pipe cleaner or something like that. I haven't got any pipe cleaners so I've just put a bit of um, paper towel around an old brazing rod and I'm just going to go around the inside of these holes and coat all those areas of wood that are just going to want to wick up loads of epoxy. Um, get them nicely sealed before we fill the holes. I'm also going to coat the threads of the fitting and the base of the fitting as well. Now I'm going to mix up some thickened epoxy. And I'm using the 404 high density filler to thicken this. That wants to be a fairly firm consistency, like a sort of peanut butter. That's about perfect. And then I'm going to load it into a syringe. So I'm going to inject this into the hole and try and work from the bottom back out to avoid any voids that we might build up in there. Just keep an eye on the inside. Get a nice even fill of the hole. Back the syringe out as that fills up. Uh, we also want an amount of epoxy around this area which is going to create the bed for the fitting. So now we're ready to install the fitting.
just a quick clean up with a little bit of epoxy thinner on a cloth and uh, that will get all your epoxy off the exposed edges of the fitting. Okay so there's the installed fixing on the outside and then the plate from the inside. Should be strong enough to pull a battleship I would think that fixing now. Uh, I can imagine a lot of you will be thinking how on earth are you going to get that fixing out of there another day. It's going to be pretty difficult to remove but um, one thing to remember is that epoxy softens at around 95 degrees so all you're going to really need to do is just to get a heat gun on this. Um, heat the fitting up to around 95 degrees and the epoxy will soften so that you can just pull it straight back out. So uh, it's not impossible to get it off another day. The good thing is you're probably not going to need to get it off another day because it's very unlikely that you're going to get any movement or water ingress through there. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I'm planning to do another video on removable threads in epoxy. So um, I'll show how to do a threaded pocket like this um, where you can actually remove the fitting if you need to on something that um, may need to come off the deck or something like that more often. So uh, I'll do that in a separate video. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see what else I've been up to. Okay, so that's it for now. Cheers, guys.